All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Eugene Cousins here, and today we're talking about the Boson Tandem Glider. Now, Dudek originally promised this glider as a product for, for pilots that had records in mind. And what does that mean? Is it a performance glider? Is it something that is super fuel efficient and long distance flying? What exactly is the Boson all about? Now, I used to fly the Dudek Orca XX, which I would, the best way to describe that is the perfect safari commercial tandem glider. Um, localized flying, something between, between 42 and 50 kilometers an hour, so not very fast. That's why I say it's a great safari cruiser because if you're doing local flying with a passenger in commercial, uh, um, commercial I, with a commercial viewpoint, I think that was a great uh, product, is a great product still. Um, it's a 42 square, the Orca XX, so it's much bigger and it's more difficult to, to pull up and you need the help of both passengers to do that. Now, anybody that knows foot launch uh, with the paramotor knows that it's difficult and it's, well, it's not exactly a comfortable situation having two people together and that's why it's only recommended for uh, experienced pilots. Now, I had to, or at least I wanted to, get into the frame of mind that I could do cross-country flights um, stretch my legs a little bit and join other pilots that are flying solo um, with a tandem glider, take a passenger along, someone like my wife or anybody that wants to see what this whole sport is about. So I had a pick between the Orca 5 and the Boson and I settled on the Boson simply because I looked at the, uh, at the, the, the test stats and what caught my eye was the incredibly slow takeoff speed. It was actually slower in takeoff than um, the Orca XX and the Orca 5. So that was promising. But it's tiny. It's a 31 squared lighter. Now just think about that. 31 squared lighter picking up close to 300 kilograms, or at least that's the max weight. Now that is, a, that is way more than the equivalent size, the, the Universal 1.1 31, which picks up 170 kilos. So how did how did Dudek exactly achieve that and still um, give us performance if this thing has got the speed that it comes recommended with or at least comes advertised with? Dudek says up to 75 kilometers an hour. Is that achievable? Well, I can tell you folks that I had a great first flight and I got up to 70 kilometers an hour even with just using a third of the trim. All right, so let's hit the points um, that most of you would be interested in. The, uh, the, the takeoff, how was that? Uh, rotation, incredibly simple, came up over my head. I wouldn't need another passenger to try and help me pull that up. It was even easier to launch than the Universal 31. Actually, it was way easier than the 31 Universal to launch. Um, uh, you'll see in the video, pretty newbie mistake I made. I forgot to switch the ignition on of the machine. That's why I'm running a bit further in the video. You can't figure out why am I just wasting so much space. So I had to let go of the brake and I'll switch the ignition on. A total newbie mistake. And if the glider wasn't as docile as this thing, when it comes to takeoff, I would have had to do a redo on that takeoff, but it was fine. I didn't even ram into the throttle. Uh, the glider felt completely controllable, slowly eased into the throttle, we got off the ground, and I had a much better climb rate uh, on the takeoff than I would on the Orca XX. At least that's how it felt to me. It was a very light wind. It didn't help too much, but um, it was laminar and, uh, and controllable. All right, on the climb rate, Trims closed, I measured something like four feet per second on average that it that the, the boson gave me, which is incredible for a tandem. And the two passengers, the two of us together, was over 300 pounds. It was something like almost like 350 pounds. Um, so it's it's too heavy, guys. Well, it's not oversized, guys, but we we're not light size. Um, 437 pounds total for takeoff on this 31 boson, and it handled it perfectly well and gave that four feet per second climb rate. On the trim slows. Uh, next one, next topic would be the steering. Now the steering on the Orca was very hard to do when you were turning. It turned like a bus or a 747 and it kind of worked the pilot's arms. Whereas the Boson has got 2D steering and it's very light to the touch and you can easily turn and use it. However, my criticism would be with me doing high hang point tandems, it was quite high up to reach. And here comes the big positive on the Boson. As soon as you're airborne, you could grab these little TST toggles, the same as the new Cleon 4 has. And I could, you know, I lit up when I saw this addition to the glider because I saw that for the first time in the new phone. I thought it was incredibly cool uh, for cross country flying. So if you open up the trims and they're a little bit out of reach, you can grab these little TST toggles and you could just steer with them. And they're incredibly light to the touch as well. 
The glider turns on a dime. It really is a pleasure to fly this thing. And it's completely different uh, from the, the Orca XX, but it also gives you kind of the same feeling where it just keeps that direction. I did hit bumps and a little bit of bumps, ups and downs. Um, maybe it was rotor, maybe it was a bit of thermic activity. There were some thunder clouds in the distance. Um, and I, um, I could feel it had that nice suspension feel to it, the same as the Orca. Now, a lot of guys have already asked me when they saw me fly this thing, what kind of speeds I'm hitting, which is the next topic. All right, so it did 26.5 knots uh, on the trim close. That's the average speed up and down measured. Um, so I think it's pretty, it's, it's pretty slow, but at the, that's the speed out of ground effect. So that's not the speed you're going to be putting your feet down on the ground, because once you go into ground effect, um, the air squashes between... The, it gets trapped between the glider and the ground, and that's how you bleed off the speed. You can start flaring. So 26.5 knots, the average speed. I did open it up to 35 knots, but it didn't go past that, and that's the criticism on the trimmers start getting out of my reach. It's possible to do it. There is a nice big loop that you can grab and pull down, but I was going to ease that into a next flight. So when measuring the top speeds of this glider, I think I'll be pushing that. Um, uh, into some further flights. But on the first one, I was happy hitting 35 knots for the third of the trim. So it's a, it's a quick tandem glider. And it really is a really good solution if you're trying to fly with a passenger joining other pilots flying the faster wings and not being able to keep up with them. So this thing is going to solve that. You'll be able to, to join other pilots. Um, all right, so the last topic I'm going to try and cover will be the landing. The landing was so sweet. I was able to, once in ground effect, I was able to bleed off that speed, came in slow, once in ground, ground effect, it was even slower. And you can see from the, uh, the footage, I was basically just putting it down. There was no pressure on the passenger to really run. I was just trying to bleed that off and put it down. So fantastic landing speed. And this is really the way you want to travel with passengers when it comes to down and flying. You don't want to go you know, balls out, take off as fast as possible, and you don't want to come in really quick speeds. You want those nice and slow speeds for takeoff and landing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be doing some further updates. This is my personal boson. I'm going to fly the hell out of it. A combination of passengers, light and heavy, and I'll be posting some more figures when it comes to the speeds I'm getting on it. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.